So what does it mean when I say to show your work on a midterm? Here's a little presentation uh, that gives you an example of what I mean. So this is a little piece of, um, of an answer that uh, was on one of our murals for the in-class problems. And, you know, it has an answer, right? V equals 81 or ish meters per second, and it's got some numbers and some math. So is this showing work? Uh, I would say not really, not for the sake of a midterm. Especially because if this answer is not correct, I don't really see your reasoning there. So I can't give you credit for correct reasoning. And, you know, if it's just a guess, I don't want to give you credit just for guessing. So, of course, this is what was actually on the mural, um, which is really uh, an awesome solution. That's why I picked it, considering it was a five-minute breakout room. So let's talk about what I like about this. What I like about this is um, I like that it starts with the original equation right? The original equation right out of the box. In fact, I might have added even an ay, but other than that, I love that it's vy squared equals vy naught squared plus 2a y minus y naught. And then the person systematically lists out all of the variables that are going to be going into that equation. Does not plug them in right away, but lists them, right? And then, and only then, plugs those variables into the equation. So I really like this. There's a lot of really good things going on here. Has a number at the end and then d makes a new step using that number and finally gets an answer. So if you're not sure yet um, what problem this was for, <laughs> That's okay. That's an indication maybe that on a midterm you want to put even more information to give the grader and the reader a sense of what this problem was about and where you got these numbers. So an even better option then would be to add a diagram. To add a diagram that explains um, where those 65 and 35 and 115 came from. And even better then is to give the axes. Where we tend to make mistakes are on minus signs or plus signs. And so explaining where the axis is, where the zero point is, is really key. This is a correct answer. If you notice, if you start at y naught equals zero for the ball thrown off the cliff, it lands at negative 115 meters and gravity is downward. Gravity is downward. This person could have even uh, done something like, say, gravity is downward, right? Acceleration is minus g. So a picture helps, axes help, and then putting in what you're trying to find, putting in what you're trying to find. The other reason why you want to put this in here is that this solution has invoked some variables that were not given, right? This, this invokes some variables that were not given. What's VY here? What's VY, right? VY, well, it helps to actually define what that means. When you use a variable that was not given, you, you know, make one up, but that's an important one to make up, you want to say what it is if you're going to be using it. So having some kind of diagram, this diagram uh, speaks a thousand words about what are the variables, the thing that you're solving for, the thing that's going to end up in your answer. And then don't be afraid of using words. Um, a person could add some words here, what the, saying the horizontal component of velocity stays constant, right? You might have wondered in, you know, looking at this solution, where does this piece come from? It came from some reasoning. Go ahead and use words here. You don't need a paragraph. In fact, a paragraph is not a good idea because, you know, it indicates maybe you don't know what the most important parts are. But go ahead and say some words that go with ideas. And then, since you're drawing, right, you can lead the viewer, the reader's eye. You can say things like, you know, the 65 meters per second goes over here and the 60.74 meters per second goes over here, and then box your answer. Box your answer. Give the, the grader um, an idea where to look at the end for your answer. Okay, so I would consider this a good example of showing your work, a good example of showing your work. Now, there is a circumstance here for what happens if you're given a problem that is symbolic with no numbers, you think, oh man, what do I do then? Well, you do something very similar, actually. You can start the same way. 
And so I've just drawn over on top here the, um, what this looks like, and it looks very similar. Only now, instead of the 65 and the 35, now you have just the variables that were given. Let's say you're given a V naught and a theta and an H. You are always allowed to use well-known constants like pi, that's a constant, and g, that's a constant. You're always allowed to use those, but having the diagram illustrate what was given is important. You still might need to use variables like vy in your solution, but the goal here is to come up with an answer that only includes, only includes the things that were given and well-known constants. So other than that, you just keep proceeding. So here I've filled in the rest here on what that might look like, and this is really just copying what uh, the mural uh, had in that group's breakout room, but I've not put in numbers. I've just left in the variables. So I give the variables, and then I plug in those variables, right? I plug in those variables, right? And then I, um, once I have that expression, then I take that whole expression and I plug it in down here, and um, and that's it. And then I simplify. You do have to simplify. Notice, by the way, that simplifying is an important piece of this because simplifying, realizing that uh, I can pull out a V naught squared out of this and I get a cosine squared and a sine squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. And so by simplifying, I actually get a very important result for this problem. By simplifying, I find that it doesn't actually depend on theta, that the final speed doesn't depend on theta. So simplification here is an important part to getting your final answer, right? So still have the diagram, still use words to explain, explain your thinking, and then just leave the variables in instead of plugging in numbers, and you can get a symbolic answer for this problem. Okay, so in summary, a few things to remember. Um, if you invent new ones, and you often will have to invent new ones, explain what they are. Don't just start using them. Explain with a diagram or in words what they are. And diagrams are your friends here. A picture's worth a thousand words, more so in physics than ever before. Draw your chosen axes. You're gonna be writing in plus and minus you know, in your solution, you have to explain what those mean. So choose your axes. They're almost never given for you. Draw your chosen axes. And yes, you must simplify. That's a lot of a lot of what the solution is about is finding what the simplest version is. Okay. A phrase or two can be useful. Avoid paragraphs, but don't be afraid of words here. Just because this is physics doesn't mean you have to have no words, but don't write an essay, right? You need to have the mathematics and the pictures to go with just a phrase or two. Numerical answers must have units in order to be correct. If it's furlongs and, you know, fortnights, uh, then the answer is not correct. And if it's symbolic, your answers can only inc include the variables that were given and well-known constants like g and pi. Imagine you're an app designer, right? And the user of the app is going to put in, say, v naught and theta, and that's it. And your app has to come up with a number. It can't include variables that the user is not prompted for. So whatever variables are given in the statement of the problem, that's what has to be in the answer and no more. Okay, and a little pro tip. Uh, imagine that you're the grader. Make it easy on the grader. The grader is going to be grading hundreds and hundreds of these. If the grader has to do math for you or has to hunt and peck or read your mind, mm, that's not in your best interest. So make things as simple and well laid out as you can. Okay, I hope this helps. Good luck.